On today's photo moment, we're going to be unboxing the brand new Mevo Plus featuring a brand new top-down camera, which is kind of fun, with a really important question for you, my viewing audience. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first thrice weekly daily live, daily, not daily, live show here on YouTube every weekday, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's, you know, I'm tired. That's what it is. That's my excuse. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, where we talk about all kinds of things, camera, photo, video, live, related. If it's got a camera, it's fair game. Hey, there's a, a new addition to the studio this morning um, that I need your opinion on, you, my viewing audience. I've already talked to the live audience before the pre-show, and there's a pretty pretty good strong opinion on this, but it's not 100% consens con con uh, consensus. Con anyway, but I want to see what you guys think, and you got to tell me quick because I want to make this decision before Friday's big iPhone 10 unboxing. I have a top-down camera. It is right here. Look at that. There's a top-down camera. So here's the question. Which direction should the top-down camera live? There's two schools of thought on this. There's the school of thought that apparently someone has educated me on already in the comments is the 180 degree rule, meaning we don't rotate the camera 180 degrees. So what this means is, let's say this is my, my camera that, you know, the main shooting camera, the one you're looking at now, and you know, I'm here. As I go top-down, that the camera effectively is doing this. It's just moving up like this. And what that means is that anything that is on the right-hand side of the screen now, your right, stays on the right-hand side of the screen, right? So that makes visual sense. There's a continuity thing there. The other way is the camera rotates 180 degrees, and so you've got your top-down, I mean, your uh, face-on normal like this, but then when it goes top-down, oops, let me do this one, when it goes top-down, the camera basically flips around. And the advantage of that is, for me, is it makes it a lot easier. You're now, you, the audience, are now looking at things from my perspective. It makes it easier for me to look at something. I can read it, and I'm reading it top down. The problem right now is when I'm reading this, Mevo Plus Livestream Like a Pro is facing me, but when I switch over to the top down, you can see that it is backwards to you. So I do this, and it's the correct way for you. If I have something over here on camera left, and I flip over to the other side, it's still on camera left. So that's, that's the challenge. What do you think it should be? The Majority consensus so far is pretty strong, but I want to let you guys, and those who are watching live still, by all means, keep sharing your opinion. Those not watching live, tell me in the comments what you think. And if necessary, I will make a change before Friday. It's going to be really easy to do. Um, but I just, I want to know. I want to know what you guys think should be. So there's that. So thank you. Uh, let me know that. I think it's going to be a fun thing. And just here, FYI, this is really cool too. Watch this. Let me do it this way. Um, let's go to the overhead and whoosh, look, you get the big zoom. There's my whole desk. This is the whole table. It's kind of madness, but this is fun. So you got my iPad if I'm doing iOS stuff. This is the laptop that uh, allows me to monitor the health of the stream and how many people are here. This is my demo system as well as where I've got my ATEM software. This is my switching iPad. And um, and then this keyboard here, which is a little reflective, this keyboard here and this mouse are reflecting a computer screen that you can't see, which is the one that has the comments on it when I do the comment splits like this. Pretty cool, right? Um, and, of course, being Zoom, I can quickly zoom that down in, Oof. and it nicely refocuses, and we are good to go. In case you're wondering, that is a GH4 up there. It's an old GH4 with an Olympus lens, um, a 12 to something zoom, variable aperture. It's a little bit on the slow side, but it's working fine for this, and it does have a nice zoom range. And it, I, as you saw, I can do that, and it refocuses as soon as it hits quickly, and we're good to go. Um, it's like an f6.3, so i got good, good large depth of field here. I think it's good. I think it's good. Uh, real quick, let's see what's going on in the comments regarding my already question about the camera angle, and then we're going to go into the unboxing. Uh, lots of opinions beforehand, or, uh, before we went live, by the way, and the majority of people saying they like the POV that would be my POV, so the opposite of the way it is now, but we'll see what other people say. Um, Sean says, I don't feel like the 180-degree rule applies to this scenario. That's the rule where it, it, the camera doesn't rotate. Um, this is, that's more for shooting dialogue and narratives. Okay, wouldn't it be easier for you to not have to read stuff upside down? Well, certainly it's a lot easier for me if it flips the other way. <laughs> Guarantee it's a lot easier for me. APN TV says there is a school of thought these days that the 180 rule is less important as today's viewers get it. In the early days of film, people found it much more confusing. Oh, that's an interesting, that's interesting. Joshua says, I think the over the shoulder works better instead of the way it is now. Okay, that's pretty pretty strong consensus. Uh, the 180 degree rule is not just for dialogue, it's for visual continuity. Yep, there is. That, that is true too. Um, best use of the top-down gadget says, cool, thanks, thanks. Uh, the other, another reason that I could see flipping it, justification for that, would be if 
So you know I've got my close-up camera that comes in from this angle, right? So there's that close-up camera. But I would also like to, at some point, add a camera that is over the shoulder because sometimes I want to show something from behind, not necessarily top down. And we'll see. Maybe I won't need it. I've, I've had to move that close-up camera over there several times for a different thing that I was doing. But maybe with the top down, I won't need it. But if I had a, a top down and an over the shoulder, then I do feel like those should be the same angle. So I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. But you guys are, have a pretty strong consensus so far, but we're going to um, let the opinions run for a day or two and see what happens. Um, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this thing started, shall we? Reverse from top down is my opinion. Gadget, reverse from top. Wait, I need help. Just say my perspective or camera perspective. <laughs> the way it is now or my perspective. That's the easiest way to put it. Okay, let's have an unboxing, shall we? So let's take advantage of this over of this little box here. I've got this fabulous little Mevo. See, I'm already doing it. I'm like, oh, i got to angle it. Oh, wrong way. Mevo Plus. This is the new Plus model. The non-Plus model is sitting right next to it. And this, of course, is the, uh, the uh, I forget what it's called, the bundle, the kit, the bigger kit. This is the one that came with the Boost and the camera itself and I guess the chargers it came with and probably cards and adapters and then a the little base pad for that, all that good stuff. Um, but today we've got the brand new one. Now, my understanding so far of the new one is, I, as far as I know, the camera is all the same. The major difference here is the connectivity. Some of the tech and the connectivity is to give us a better, more reliable and longer distance signal. So side by side, they shouldn't look any different. Uh, but it's for people who have watched the channel before and saw some of my earlier Mevo tests with this guy, you may recall that I have had some connectivity issues. So hopefully this will resolve that. Now, not to say that this was unusable. It's by all means, this has been a fantastic device. But I had run into some issues, um, especially with the streaming to YouTube, which when I was first working with it was totally in beta. And now that it's out of beta, so it's working much better. But regardless, those connectivity issues, I believe, are largely addressed in this hardware. So let's uh, let's let's I'll unbox it. If I can figure out where the box actually opens, it opens from the bottom. Seriously? Okay. Well, then there we go. Let's just take a look at this top-down view and let's get this thing open from the bottom. Why? That's odd. Why would you open from the bottom? Well, I guess it allows us to do this. Here we go. We'll go like we'll go like this and go. Uh, boom. Boxed out. And ooh, pretty shiny box. Let's see here. Mevo box here, open that up. Oh, it's very iPhone-like. See, already going the wrong way. It's very my iPhone-like, isn't it? Direct your story. Very nice. Oh, it's all black. Hold on a second. Doesn't the other one have a little red stripe on it? It did. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's a difference right there. The old one has the red. I like the red, actually. I kind of miss that. The red thing and then the gray one. I mean, I guess you got to have some kind of a hardware differentiator, but I don't know. I kind of like the red. It was kind of a cool little accent. Oh, well. Anyways, put that one away. And let's get this thing. Well, let's see what else is in here before we take that out. What's in this little guy? Pop up that little box. Ooh, something in here. No, this is just a big, fancy, thick box. Quick start guide. And all kinds of fun little gadgets in here. What does this say? This See, here we go. There's where I can't read it upside down. This says, I have no idea what this says. This says, one, two, three, how to get through this. Let's just start opening boxes. This is probably the base. Let's see what's in here. Yep, there is the base. The base still has the little red, little red lock on it. That's good. Little red lock on there. And so that's looking nice there. Yep, nice the base. And let's see, then we have in here a charger, it must be. Let's get the charger out of there. Excellent. Wall wart charger. And nothing else in there. Pops out. That's I like this. I do like this design. So that you have a the ability to, you know, I guess my close-up isn't zoomed in enough, is it? Let's try zooming that in. Oops, wrong way. Let's try zooming that in. A little bit, okay, obviously I have to reposition that camera, but I like this design, because these plugs are just annoying, they always get caught on things and whatever. Um, now I realize this only really applies in North America, because, uh, what, in Japan I think, because I, the rest of the plugs are always bigger in this, but I will say that even though this is kind of a crappy design for a plug to begin with, uh, not this part, but the actual plugs, it is nice that they collapse down like that. I kind of I kind of appreciate that. So there's that. And in this box, presumably, oops, wrong camera. Sorry. Let me switch cameras there. Uh, this must be, it says memory card and USB. Does that have to come with a memory card? That'd be nice. Let's see here. We've got, we've, yes. Oh, it, well, it comes with an adapter. You can never have too many of these. This is the little micro SD to SD card adapter, which again, you can never have too many of. And I have left these things behind before, so that's awesome to have another one of those. And then just a standard USB cable. And this is not USB-C, this is the USB, what is that, B? 
B, B, I think that's right. Anyway, so there we go. That is everything in the box. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. No surprises there. Um, I don't know if this thing is going to be charged or not, so I guess we'll find out. I'm going to fire this bad boy up and see what happens. Oh, I'll take off the little plastic wrap there. I, I'm bummed about the red. I really, I, honestly, I am. I, that's a silly thing, but I really, I liked the red on there. Uh, oh well, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? All right, let's put the red one away. At least, they, at least there is a differentiator. I will say that at least there is a differentiator, so that you can tell the difference. Because if you couldn't tell the difference, then oh boy, things would get a might bit confusing around these here parts. Especially all the crap piled around here these days. All right, um, so now I got more. That is an awful lot of packaging. Um, a lot of stuff around here. Okay. As before, this little adapter here is fantastic. So this guy here, this is the base unit, and this, the camera, snaps onto the base unit, like a nice little magnetic. It's cool, I know you can't really, but can you kind of hear it snap in? Nice little magnetic snap. Oh, it does come with a memory card. Oh, excellent. What does it come with? Eh, there we go. It comes with a teeny tiny little 16 gig. There's, I mean, not teeny tiny in the capacity, 16 gig is great, um, and that is a 16 gig micro SD card, excellent. Pop that back in there. USB port there is for charging, because remember this thing, of course, is battery powered and uses its own internal battery. That snaps on magnetically, and then you have a lock on there just to make sure it doesn't come off. What's super cool, this is the same base as the old unit. What's super cool about this is the flexibility of this base, if you've never seen this before. So right now you're looking at a quarter 20 tripod socket, standard quarter 20. You can, can, here, can I open that? Nope, I need a coin. Did I put a coin in my pocket this morning? I, did. God, I'm so clever. Let's take that, mm, open that up. There we go. So now let's take this guy out and come here. Come here. Come on. You can do it. There we go. We take this guy out and come on, come on, come on. That's a long thread in there, but it makes sense. There's a reason for this. We flip it over and that is now a 3816. So you got quarter 20 on this side, 3816 on this side, but the bonus move is this thread right here matches a microphone stand. So this thing is so small and light that you can easily put this on top of a microphone stand. So if you, you don't have to have a full on tripod, just a microphone stand on there and off you go. I think that's cool. This is really, honestly, one of those little brilliant bits of design that you go, ooh, more things should have that. Uh, obviously you couldn't put something this big in a camera body, but imagine if every, large studio strobe had something like this. Just the ability to put things on light stands, would, I mean, uh, microphone stands, which are quite prevalent, um, often cheaper, and so on. Anyway, I just, I think it's a really nice little touch, so so there you go. Uh, mm, let's put this thing back in here before I lose it. I'm gonna leave the regular tripod side out, because that's what I'm gonna need. And let's see what's going down the uh, on the comments here. Uh, Joshua says, so you can leave your gear even farther down the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, that's a reference to me doing these demos outside in front of my studio and leaving camera gear on the side of the sidewalk and walking really far away. Y if you saw my street, you would know it's not really a concern. Although there are more and more, are more, and more businesses showing up on the street here. Um, and it's Oregon, so like half of them are pot related. I swear to God, every morning we come in here, it's like, oh yeah, growing. <sighs> Anyway, um, which I know for some of you is probably a really good thing. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I really don't worry. I mean, there's people around, Ryan's here, it's not that much of a concern. But anyway, yes, in theory, I can go farther away and still control it. That's the key. Um, one of the things that I've done with the Boost is I've taken a wireless microphone, come here you, taken a wireless mic kit, run it into the Boost, because with the Boost, it has a full-size USB port. Let's switch over to this. Again, so you can see that in case you haven't seen this before. This is the booster pack. It's got an ethernet port for obviously wired connections, full-size USB, and then that little USB is for charging. This full-size USB allows you all kinds of really, really cool things. And uh, the boost, of course, is compatible with the new Mevo Plus as well. The boost allows you to, where did I put it? Um, here we go. To do things like take a USB modem and plug that in, and instead of having to rely on a Wi-Fi connection or your phone's connection to rely on a connection off of one of these. And it, it works really, really, really well. Now what's interesting, and this is something I'll have to look into and see if they have updated yet, but what's interesting is at least at the last time I tested this, when you plug this in, this didn't actually, the, the data path did not transmit from this over the USB into the device. 
All the USB power was doing was effectively charging the, uh, powering this and creating a Wi-Fi hotspot that then the device would then connect to. Now the device is only right here, it's this far away, so it's not like it's a, a long stretch to go, but it's still not as reliable as if it was truly wired, plugged in, and the path going through USB. So we'll have to see if they updated that. Um, I know they said that, I believe they said that they could update it, that they should be able to, but um, we'll have to find out about that. Uh, but anyway, so you could do that, or one of the other things that I've been able to do with it is, do I have it in here? I don't, I moved it over to here. I just put this away this morning, because I'm smart like that. In this box, this is my, the carrying kit for my wireless lav, which I'm currently talking on now, I have one of these guys. This is a USB to audio adapter, simple little five or eight dollar adapter, something like that. If I plug this into the boost, like so, now I've got audio input, regular microphone input. So that allowed me to then connect my wireless lav, my Sennheiser mic or whatever, any wireless lav with the standard eighth inch jack on it into there. And that gave me the audio range. This does have a microphone built into it, but just like your smartphone, the microphone on it is, you know, it's okay, but it's not great. And it's certainly really only good if you're at a close distance. As soon as you get farther away, forget about it. You wanna have some kind of external mic. So that's, that's what that is for. Um, yeah, the Boost is a great, pro also it's a massive extra battery, but you don't need any of this to use the product, which is super fun. You can just do it with this itty bitty little thing here. And I've gone on the road where I've wanted to take uh, kind of an additional streaming device or just I wanna have this for streaming and this is this is it, it's all I carry and you're, you're ready to go. All right, well, let's, uh, let's power this thing on. And let's see here, it should, you get these cool little lights. Ooh, see the lights? Wee. Fun little lights, they'll let that thing power up. And um, here's my iPhone. And let's plug the iPhone into the viewing system so you can see it, and we will connect to it and see what happens here. Oh, I can even do a top down on this. Oh, I wonder, actually, I wonder how this will look. I haven't tried this yet. Well, that's not too shabby. I mean, it's obviously not as good as seeing the full on proper screen, but that's not too shabby. Uh, it's, uh, all right, let's just do this. Let's go into the proper view there so you can see the iPhone properly. Let's launch the settings. And actually, no, I'm not going to launch settings. I'm just going to launch Mevo. So I'd be starting this up like somebody who's never had one of these before. My Mevo app is on here somewhere, um, in theory. There it is. Let's launch that guy, and let's see what happens. Um, Sean has got a very good question. Sean says, can you use two Mevo simultaneously in a live stream? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And that's something we're going to try. Um, we are... We're going to try that today. I'm assuming this one's charged. I think they're both charged up. Uh, yeah, I want to try that today because this is that that is a really cool thing that I've never been able to do, and now I will be able to do it. Um, Gadget saying, good move, good move Mevo on the screw thread. It is a very, very good move, isn't it? Okay, let's go back to the iPhone thing. It says, set your iPhone's Wi-Fi network to Mevo 11 5CR. Well, that's the new one. Okay, I'm going to tap configure iPhone. Takes me over to my, wi to my settings. There's the Wi-Fi, and... Let's see when that shows up. There it is, Mevo 11 C5R. Excellent. And let that finish connecting. Let that finish connecting. And uh oh, we're getting. Oh, no, the health is good on the stream on this side, but everybody else is complaining that it's no good. Uh oh. Hmm. I'm going to tell you guys the stream buffering on everybody's end, but on here it's fine, so that means it must be a YouTube problem. Sorry. Mm. Bummer. Okay. Well, I will continue, and hopefully this will just continue on looking good. All right. Let's switch back to the Mevo app. Uh, oh, it needs an update. Okay. Well, that's probably going to take a few minutes. So we'll update the firmware. We'll let that go. While that is happening, we'll hopefully let the stream pick back up. People saying the sound is choppy, but at our end, it says the health is good. Uh, hey, nothing we can do, guys. Everybody refresh. Um, refresh. Just tell everybody to refresh. Ryan, you do it. Tell everybody to refresh in the comments, please. And uh, hopefully that'll help. It's just a YouTube thing. All right. While that is, yeah, YouTube connectivity is doing YouTube. All right, well, this is updating, so we have nothing, we're not missing anything here. Let's just see what's going on in the comments, see if there's anything else that I missed earlier. Uh, ba -ba -ba. That's all about the 180 degree rule. Yeah, it seems the consensus seems to be pretty, pretty strong. Joshua, everybody says better now. Excellent. So guys, just so you know, that appeared to be a totally YouTube-sided thing because everybody out there got the effect of it, but we in here saw zero issues with our stream bandwidth. So it had to be something in between that we have no control over, hence the YouTube. All right, so this right now, in case you missed it, is in the middle of an update. It is doing a firmware update on the Mevo, so we just got to let that finish up before we continue. And once that is done, um, I will get this one working, and then I will go ahead and fire up the second Mevo, and I'll go ahead and put this on the boost right now. 
Put that on the boost. Lock that in place. There we go. Get that in the boot. I'm not going to turn it on yet because I don't want it to interfere with what's going on here. And then I will create a new stream and we'll do one of those little Inception streams where we'll have a secondary stream and we'll do it from two different Mevo cameras. Because why not? Because we can. And still updating, still updating. Anybody else got any other questions? Because, oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do a little house ad while we're doing for this. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I know. Oh, we haven't talked about this yet. So we've got uh, coming up. Well, this is last week. So last week's live training was Polar, the end of Polar. Polar is a beautiful app for iOS, macOS, Android, and Windows. And this is all about uh, photo editing on a very simple but very powerful and effective side. And this last video, the workflow video, was a literally workflow. I took a couple of photos and kind of went all the way through this, the process of developing them, um, talked about my thoughts on why I would develop a photo this way and so on. It was a lot of fun. And that marked the end of the Polar live training, which means we are now ready for the next live training, which starts tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I believe. And that is going to be this one here. Lightroom CC. The new Lightroom CC. This is going to be the desktop version of Lightroom CC, the brand new one. And that's the way that it is. Um, somebody get rid of that Pelican guy. And then, let's see here. Um, that's that's what we're doing there. So let's see what's... Um, oh, uh oh Well, that's curious. This is not good. It's telling me that the firmware update failed. No response from Mevo. I don't like that. Hmm. Let's try this again. Configure iPhone. Never like seeing those kinds of things. You know, I'll, that's a weird error because I'll bet that it actually did it. It's just that in the process of restarting the Mevo, which of course has to happen after firmware update, it lost the connection and then didn't know what was happening. But let's just see. Ready, connect. Yes, yeah, see, now it's not telling me a firmware update is needed. So a little bug there in that it's telling me that a firmware update is needed when it, in fact, is not. But there we go. We are connected, and there is the Mevo. Now, of course, uh, this is going to be out of sync with the audio that you're hearing now, but that's okay. It is all in place. So that is now working. So like you can see my screen here, and you see that one. So now let's, let's fire up Mevo number two. Um, I need to, let's see here. I don't remember how to add a second Mevo. Let's see here. Well, I don't remember how. I've never actually done it, but I know I've seen creating static. Oh, this is just giving me instructions. I don't want that. Let's try going into here and maybe in the settings. Uh, live stream in general, advanced about support. Um, ooh, maybe up here. Nope, that's not it. Let's go back into here. Disconnect network live streaming. General. Let's try general. Password, light ring, user interface, Mevo button, auto turn on and off. Hmm. Nope, that's not it either. Maybe up here. Trying all these different settings. Oh, nope, that's just to rename it. Network general advanced, maybe under advanced. EV correction, anti-flicker filters. These are all really cool settings, by the way. Um, so you can take quite a bit of control over the image that you're seeing through the Mevo. Uh, exposure, I don't know, EV, you know, exposure evaluation correction, plus or minus. White balance can be auto or manual. Anti-flicker, you've got colored filters in here. I don't know why you do that, but you could. Um, auto exposure, you can choose your frame rate. 25, 29, 97, or 30. Not 24, that's interesting. Image, ooh, electronic image stabilization in beta. That's a new feature. That's cool. So, yeah. I asked for that. I wonder if that was one of my... Um, remember, this is a 4K camera. But most people are not streaming 4K. Most people are streaming 1080p. Which means if you are cropping into the sensor... Um, for your show, you're not using the full width of it, then you have a lot of room for stabilization, a lot of room for movement. That's really cool. I wonder if that's a feature that's only available on the new Mevo, if that's hardware-based. Hmm, we'll have to find out about that. Anyway, uh, live stream studio mode. Uh, so here's, the, you can set the resolution of your camera. Do you want to broadcast in 1080p, 720p at 5 megabit, or 720p at, at or sorry, 720p at 7.5 megabit or 720p 5 megabit. I'm going for 1080p 15 megabit because that's awesome. Um, iPhone audio, remember, it can use this, the speaker, the microphone on your iPhone or a microphone plugged into your iPhone, which actually, that's another very good point. So if you are using this, if you want to have really good audio out in the field and all you want to do is have this and your phone, just get a wired lav and plug that into your iPhone. The iPhone, of course, is what makes the connection and it controls the Mevo. And then you've got a wired connection to the phone that's in your hand as you're walking around being on air and you have fantastic sound because it's wired, lab wired into here and it syncs up. There's no syncing issues. It does whatever magic it has to do and it keeps that in sync, which is really, really cool. Of course, if you want to do something much larger where you have an audience of people or a, like a panel of people and everybody's labbed up, then all that audio has got to go into a mixing board and then from the mixing board, you would send the audio into the USB port on here, which is another advantage of the boost. And then you would have that 
perfect audio from everybody with a whole separate mixing board. Lots of different really cool options. Lots of, a lot of ways to do this thing. But so far I haven't figured out how to connect a second camera. And I know that you can. I know that you can. So that's, I'm looking at camera assist. Let's just take a look at the other things in here. That's just microphone settings. Which microphone is it going to use? These are the filter settings. You can access these here. This is the library of recorded stuff, which obviously I haven't recorded anything yet. Um, let's see what's under the help. Let's Maybe if I go to the help system, it'll tell me how to do this, hopefully without making me watch a video. As much as I love video content, it's all video stuff. I don't want to do that. Hmm. Well, hey, Ryan, Google it real quick. See if you can find it and tell me because I am clearly... I thought this was going to be an easy, obvious thing, but I have totally missed out on this. Network, Mevo, Hotspot, Disconnect Range, Live Streaming, Vimeo, Live Stream, Facebook, Live, Periscope, or YouTube. So you got lots of different places to stream to. General, Password, Light, and Ring, User Interface, Mevo Button. We've already done all of this. We've already looked at all that, I should say. Um, advanced Settings. We looked at that as well. Hmm. Well, let's just try... So if I close that, that closes that. Can I... Nope, that's just zooming into the pinch. Well, I am just bummed now because I know that you can do this. Let's see. Let me just see what happens if I relaunch it. Because it's on the initial setup page where you get to see the second, the ability to add a second camera. I'm just not sure why I'm not seeing an interface here to do that. Hmm. All right. Well, Ryan's going to look that up and see if he can he can educate me in my ear. And in the meantime, let's just go back and see what's going on in the comments. Um. Oh, Nathan Lundy is here. Hey, hey, Nathan. Excellent. Thanks, Nathan, from uh, from from live stream. Uh, hey, Joseph, just an FYI, you can only use one Mevo at a time with the app. You need to use our studio software to use two Mevo at a time. That would explain everything, but I thought you could set up multiple Mevos in the app there. Huh. Okay. Well, thank you, Nathan. Thank you for explaining that to me. That's why I'm fumbling around like an idiot here, unable to find it, because it's not in there. So the studio software, is that the desktop software, Nathan, or is that a different app on, on the phone? Please... Please continue to educate me. Um, thank you very much for that. Mark, is it 8-bit color? I'm sure it's 8-bit color. And um, Gadget says he thought he saw a setting saying remote Mevo. Hmm. Uh, Nathan's is explaining combination of, let me put the comments up here, combination of both. You can use live stream studio, which runs on a PC, where you can bring up, um, bring in up to 10 Mevo as IP cameras, then add graphics as any other options, um, then use studio to stream to your destination. Right, so there's that option. Um, Okay. Nathan also says if you put both Mevo on a common network, then you can connect to each of them in the app, but can only connect to a single Mevo at one given time. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So we're not going to do the tool, the dual to inception stream here today. Oh, that's okay. I thought we could do it off of both, but um, I guess you need a little bit more hardware for that, but that's okay. So the um, Nathan, what, since you're here, this is awesome. Thank you for being here. Live stream studio. Can you give us a quick rundown on the pricing of live stream studio? Um, I don't recall if it's a paid service or paid software or how that works. It's obviously not going to be free. But let's, uh, let's, if you just let me know what that costs, and we'll put that up on the screen here and let people know. Um, super. Thank you, Nathan. So good that you tuned in today. I would have been bumbling around for quite some time trying to figure that one out. All right, well, that's it. That's kind of all there is to it. It's a, I, you've seen it before. I've streamed for this thing a lot. Uh, it's a great, for me, from my production stuff, it's an awesome, awesome live streaming tool to use on the road. Clearly way better quality than just having to stream from the phone, whether I'm streaming to YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Um, you know, the streaming from the phone still works, but it's it's not the greatest experience. You know, you, you're kind of, you're doing this, you're holding it out. Even if you put it on a tripod and you're tethered to it by wire, you're limited by the range, you don't have any kind of picture-in-picture, -picture, zooming, panning, cropping, any of that. On the Mevo, of course, you have incredible stuff. You can get the range. Um, oh, it looks like we're losing our stream status. That's excellent. Well, we're just doing good all over the place here today, aren't we? Um, you've got a lot more options with the Mevo. So it's a pretty, pretty slicky, pretty slick device. All right, guys, we're having streaming issues yet again. So we are going to call this a time to wrap up the show. Um, and Nathan is now saying, for those of you who can still hear me, if you pay for any tier of live stream platform, then you will get two instances of live stream studio. Awesome. Well, there we go. All right, folks, we are out of here. Thanks a bunch for tuning in today. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you for your feedback on the top down camera. Remember, I do want to know what you would rather see. Do you want to see it forward or backward? my perspective or do you want to see the uh, camera's perspective as it is set up today? This is an important, important thing for you to tell me, although I think we already have our answer. But let me know in the comments. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you on Friday for the iPhone 10 unboxing.